Amid all the protests against the use of firearms in mass shootings, one of America's oldest gun makers has filed for bankruptcy protection. It's debt, not demonstrations, that pushed Remington Outdoors brands over the edge. The company wants to reduce its debt load by $700 million. And by entering Chapter 11, it can stay in business and make the necessary changes and keep making guns. One of its products, the AR-15 style rifle, was that used in the Sandy Hook killings. The victim's family are suing the company over that, of course. Claire Sebastian is here. Why have they gone bust? It's a number of factors, Richard. Actually, it's really informative when you look at the kind of the overall picture of the US gun industry and, and how it operates. So you talked about the AR-15, the, the, the Bushmaster-style rifle that was used in the Sandy Hook massacre. That led to some problems for, for Remington. Their, their owner, which is Cerberus Capital, a private equity firm, wanted to sell them. They announced that less than a week after Sandy Hook. They couldn't do it. They couldn't find anyone to buy them who wanted to be associated with this company. So you take that, then you add in what happened last year. So we have, uh, in the lead-up to the 2016 election, uh, gun sales rocketed. In right, the, in the so US. that's good right. for them. That's good for them. But then what happened after that? As soon as Trump's elected, or as soon as it looks in the polls like he might be, it starts to come down again. Last year, background checks, FBI background checks, fell 8%. That's the, the most since the FBI started collecting that data, and that really is what tipped them over the edge. But uh, is it Remington's problems, or is it problems for all the gun manufacturers at the moment? I mean, so it's both, essentially. Uh, Remington has got got it particularly bad, partly because of the reputational damage after Sandy Hook, partly because of the debt that they were saddled with when they were bought out by private equity uh, in 2006. And it's all just precipitated, Richard. But there's a really interesting part in the bankruptcy filing that I dug out earlier. Please do. Um, and I think this speaks to a lot of the kind of political noise that we're seeing around the gun industry. Lazard, which is the investment banker uh, that was working on restructuring their debt, they approached over 30 funding sources to try and find someone uh, to, to lend to the company before they ended up filing for bankruptcy. Uh, out of all of them, only one came forward and offered to, uh, to fund them with a $100 million uh, credit facility. Then they changed their mind. So no one would do it. The reason, they say, is they were reluctant to provide financing to firearms manufacturing. So I think, you know, we've seen the protests over the weekend. We've seen the unprecedented steps from corporations. I think people, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a moment here. All right, there's a moment. But Remington now has a chance, the existing management, to restructure before, you know, Chapter 11 versus Chapter 7, and it goes out of business. Mm -hmm. um, how will they do I mean, will they do it briefly? Will they do it? Well, that's what they say. They say that they're, they're going to continue operating, they're going to continue making guns, as well as cutting their debt by 700 million. They're, they're, they say they're going to take 145 million and add that uh, to, their, to their operations, kind of invested in their operations. So we've seen this before with gun makers. You can emerge from, uh, from Chapter 11, but look, this is a 202-year-old company. They were founded when James Madison was president. They, uh, they have a lot of history behind them, so I think they are going to be fighting to stay afloat. Good to see you. Thank you.